Welcome to my virtual lecture on creating subcircuit with LogicWorks. So, so here's LogicWorks. By the way, this window at the bottom here, it, we won't need it for a while, so you can get rid of it by clicking on this button. Um, then you have more real estate. So um, for the homework, you might want to create a uh, full adder subcircuit, although that's not required. Really, only the top level circuit is required. But instead of doing this, I'll uh, I'll do a three input XOR. Suppose we wanted a in three input XOR. You can see right now we only have two, four, and eight input XORs. All right. So the way you do that is you would um, first uh, build a circuit that you're interested in. So I'll build a uh, three input XOR from two input XORs. And um, what you would probably want to do is attach switches and probes to test the whole circuit. This one is easy enough that um, I will go straight to uh, making it a sub-circuit. In order to do that, you need to find these things called ports. Um, so port in, you need to attach that to all the inputs. Um, and port out, you need to attach it to all the outputs. So as usually, you can use the arrow keys to flip them around, their right orientation. Hit the space bar to get your select tool back. If you want to space them apart, you can. It's not really necessary. OK, maybe it's slightly easier to read. Good. All right, so we have three inputs and one output. And then you need to label them. So you can use a text tool for that. Um, and you click right in the middle of the x. And that should put the cursor next to it. So let's call the inputs something meaningful. I'm Call them A, B, C, and out um, to finish labeling. You, the way I found is you click somewhere else, and then you hit Escape. And then we can hit Space to get our regular cursor back. So that's our circuit right here. Um, I don't really have to save it, although it might not be a bad idea. So just, just in case the program crashes or something bad happens, I will save it. Um, I will save it um, on the desktop for now, and I'll call it X or three circuit. Um, okay, good. Now we are ready to um, create a symbol for this, and in order to do that, you go to File and select New. And so design is how you would what usually would happen. This thing is called a design, what we're looking at right now. But instead, we want device symbol. And you get this drawing tool. And so you could draw your circuit however you, uh, uh, you want. You could use a, ra um, a square box, a round box, and so on. Eventually, you'll be attaching these pins to the inputs. And just for reference, you can see the uh, move in clicks or ticks. So all the inputs are always two ticks apart on the gates or on the hex keyboards. So that gives you an idea of the size. So you know, I'll, I'll get a little uh, fancier here. And instead of doing these sh boring shapes, I will actually do something that looks a little bit like an XOR using this curve tool. Oh, of course, that's way too big. I just told you to make it smaller. OK, let's start over. Control-Z. Oops. OK, never mind. Let's start over. It's a little, little smaller, maybe like this, and like this, and um, like this, and like this. Of course, an XOR has two of these. Beautiful. OK, now we're going to attach some pins. Oh no, what happened to my pins? I didn't want those. Yes, go away. All right. Um, actually, we'll wait with the pins. And so we, if you're ready, if you're happy with your uh, symbol, um, you might also want to label it or something like this. So if it's self-explanatory, like in my case, you don't really need to do this. Um, OK, good. So now I have my symbol. I'm happy, and I just need to attach the pins. But it's better to open the circuit first, because it shows you what pins you might want. So here is a tricky bit where you go to Options, Subcircuit, and Part Type, or Control-Q. And by the way, there is a, a short 
uh, document on the web page that summarizes all these steps. And then when you have that window, you take the second option. Um, it says create a sub circuit symbol and select an open circuit to attach it to it. And my open circuit happens to be called XOR3 circuit. So it's important that you don't close that circuit, you leave it open. And then I say done. And then it imports uh, all the ports that my circuit has. By the way, you can look back at your circuits from the window. You can go back here. This is the circuit that I'm using. Um, and it has all these pins. So now I can use this pin symbol and it will uh, whichever one I want. So the inputs I want on the left, so I use this one. And it will actually use them in, in order. So if I don't, I could click on them too. But I will just do ABC, which is you know, roughly here, here, and here. I'm going to make them three ticks apart. You can see they're turning black over here. I'm going to use the other pin here as my output. And we're all done. If you want to make sure that it's correct, you uh, can click on them and you see they get highlighted as you click on them. So just to make sure you have them all right. If you had another circuit, you know, like uh, a full adder or something, or a 4 bit adder, and you do a big box, um, and then you would want to actually put labels with the text tools. You would want to put labels next to your pins um, so that later um, you actually know what those. Uh, things are. So you would do something like this. And you can always move them around to line them up. Okay. But for now, I'll get rid of this. I'm happy with my XOR. Now I want to save it. So we'll say um, save as. And it wants to save this thing. Well, let's give it a name first. So I'll call it um, XOR3. And it wants to save it in a library. Now, the, you don't really want to save it in the built-in library, so you might not even have write permission. Instead, you want to make a new library. So we'll click on New Library and say, you know, Daniel's Library. And then we need to save it somewhere. And I will save it, again, on a desktop. You should save it on Basin or MIT files or somewhere where it's going to be safe. OK. So now I have it here selected. And I have my part name. And I click Save. And I'm all done. Um, so I can actually close this uh, window here. And I can close this window. Uh, I don't really need to change. Yeah, why not? OK. So now I can say New Design. And I can. Um, um, my, it has my library right here. See, the only part in the library is the XR3, but of course I can say all libraries. I could say, I could search for it. Now it's one of the XORs. I click on it, and I can build a circuit with it, whatever that circuit might be. Let's, let's do this. Um, and I could hit test if it actually works. So I'll attach a probe here and a probe here. And let's attach a hex keyboard without the strobe here. Shift click. Um, and maybe we'll set this input permanently to 0. OK. And now I can test my circuit and click on it and see what kind of inputs and outputs I get. And hopefully, this is what I'm expecting to get. So one more thing. Um, so you can just create as many sub-circuits as you want, save them in your own library. Um, now, if you later restart uh, LogicWorks, it will not know about your library. So um, what you can do when you, uh, you can right click in this library window, or you can also get it from uh, File Libraries. So actually, I'm going to close my library, close lib. I'm going to close it. So this is what it would look like when you first started out. Um, 
Um, so when you first start up LogicWorks, you might want you can right click here, say open lib, find your library on wherever you saved it, um, and then you're all set to start working from there. All right, that's it. Bye bye.